Next, in our Opus Modus adventure, uh, we're going to talk about pitch, which of course comes awfully close to actually making music, um, but we're not there yet. Let's first take a look at regular pitch notation. So we'll create a variable, we'll call it melody, and let's do something in uh, C minor. Let's say something like this. And you can already see that we have some um, some different colors here. So the natural notes are in blue, the orange is, are the flat notes, and if we want to use sharps, we can uh, see that it's in, in purple. Let's listen to this. So you can see that these are the same notes, but they're notated um, differently there. Um, uh, we also have other pitch symbols that I don't want to get into, but um, just so that you're aware of them, we have quite a lot of notation for microtonal pitches. So you could do something like this, for example, uh, of course, with the octave number as well. Um, we have th uh, dots that we can use for this, and we can see that also in the notation this is being reflected. I mean, I can actually um, put a list in here just for your reference of these these um, yeah, microtonal notations and all the symbols that you can use after the pitch name, um, just so that you have that. By the way, this here is a comment. Um, we have we have we haven't really talked about comments yet, but comments are a way to to make sure that the piece of code doesn't get evaluated. So common ones are these. You can use one um, semicolon and you can say this is a comment. Um, usually this is used for, well, comment. For single lines, um, you can do two as well. This is also a comment. Um, and what you see above here is a block comment. If you want to block comment something, you can um, select the region and you can press control and then uh, the semicolon. And you can see that it puts this in. I didn't do that correctly. Let's try that again. Let's select this section here. Let's see if it works now. There we go. So now it comments everything in between here. So everything you type is, um, becomes a comment there. Let's go back to our original melody. And then let's check out our first pitch function. And a very simple one to use. And one that you will probably be using a lot is pitch transpose. Um, we can just give that a transposition value such as three and then we give it the original melody which can either be the variable or you can input a list here. So this will transpose everything three semitones up. I will remove these uh, microtonal notes there. Let's do um, something like this. Well, let's go back to C there. All right, so that's um, the very simple use of pitch transpose, uh, which you can see right here. We have some some um, other variables that we can use. By the way, two variables that you will see quite a lot is our section and exclude. They are present for a lot of functions, and it allows to, um, if you have multiple bars, to skip this function for a bar or to only include a certain bar. So let's say this melody is not one bar, but let's say we create two bars. I'll just select this. Um, I'll copy it here and then we'll change it a little bit. Um, something like this there. Um, let's say something like this and we close that. So now we have a two bar melody. What we can say here is we can say section and then we can do one for example. So you can see that it will only transpose that um, that first bar. If I remove that, it will transpose everything. And the same is true for the, so we have exclude and we have um, section. So for section, it will, it will be lists to process and for excludes, it will be list to not process. So moving on, we can also put a list here for the transpositions. So we can say, for example, let's use, uh, let's go to a fifth. We can do this and then we can give it our original melody as well. But in this case, so what it will do, it will take the first list and it will apply the seven to it. And for the second list, it will transpose it by 12. You can see that more clearly if I go minus 12 here. 
but let's say you have a just one bar melody and let's say you want to transpose every other note so the c up this one down this one up etc to do that we can use the mc list which is also a, um, a list primitive and what this will do is it will take every item in a list and put it in a sub list so you can see that now these are all nested in there and in this case it will go um it will sort of vary between these two so we'll first go minus 12 then plus 12 etc and we can do more with that we can make this list longer now that we have all these sub lists so with this alone you can already come up with quite some unique uh, melodies or it's a nice way to work with melody now another uh, very commonly used one is, is the pitch repeat so let's go with that. This one, we actually have quite some variations of them and they get more complex and they also have some different arguments here. We'll just take a look at the, at the first one here. These, these basically get extended into multiple functions so that we um, have different ways of, of repeating pitches, um, basically different pitch repeat algorithms that are being used internally. And uh, some of them go very advanced and, and with just this function, you can make pretty much every melody that you want. Um, let, let's start fairly simple. Let's say um, for the, uh, we are now having the regular one. So first we say how often we want to repeat this. This can be a sub list. And then we give the, we give it basically the melody. So to make this a little bit simpler to see what's going on here, we can, pass in a slightly simpler melody here let's say c4 d4 e4 f4 so you can see that first it repeats the c three times then it goes to the d which it will repeat two times then it will go to um, the e which it will repeat three times and then uh, again d two times so we can extend on this or we can make this quite more um, complicated by adding the offset parameter and let's take a look at that in the documentation as well we can see that um, with the offset uh, where is it here um, it's a little bit better explained here they say the offset key will randomly incorporate previous values into the series into the output um, so what that means is that if I go with an offset list of let's just use the one in the example. So the way this works is that uh, for the second value here, the D, um, we can it can either be a C or it can either or or it can be a D. It can be original. So we can actually get multiple different results when we start to use this. And um, if I add the same amount of offsets here as the amount of nodes, let's say the last position where the D is it has, an, has an offset of four, which means that all of these previous nodes could be used. So I can basically choose between the, the previous four nodes. Of course, for the first value here, that doesn't make uh, sense because there is no note in, bef in before that. But if you um, take a look at some of these examples, you'll see that you can do quite some fun stuff with that. So that's for pitch repeat. Um, and yeah, I would maybe just start with the first one and um, then you'll slowly gain an idea on how it works. Uh, some of these, these functions are, are definitely more tricky to wrap your head around. Um, but if you start with the simple one, um, that should that should give you enough of a foundation to then move on another thing now that i'm talking about this is something that we haven't talked about before but we might as well cover it now are repeats so we have this thing and let's say we want to repeat this whole thing four times now it wouldn't make sense to repeat this function four times so what we can do is we can use the gen repeat function and we can give it the argument four and this will repeat what it will first evaluate what's happening here and then it will repeat that four times now in a lot of cases this is what you want but 
in some cases you might want to actually evaluate it for different times because remember we said this can have a different output each time and in the case of gem repeat it will just always be the same it will evaluate it once and then repeat that four times if we don't want that but we want to re-evaluate every time it repeats we can use gen loop which looks like that and you can see that this function name is green and that actually shows that it's, it's re-evaluating it uh, multiple times so you get some differences there we can if we make this more complex those those differences will be uh, bigger of course we can say uh, for uh, g4 uh, we can add some parameters here so just to keep a reference of that I will add gen loop here and I will add gen repeat here um, so that you have them on your screen all right um, Let's move on. Let's go to intervals. So far we've uh, talked about pitches, but we can also work with intervals directly. We can actually also work with integers directly and we can do a lot of things. We even have functions to convert length to pitches and to, to sort of convert to different types of, of uh, material. Um, but to start relatively simple, let's go with the interval, um, interval to pitch, I think it is, to pitch. Yes, <laughs> when it turns blue, that means uh, we're doing it we're doing okay um so let's put in some intervals here two one maybe minus one maybe three minus two one something like this let's evaluate that first i don't like that last note there now this might be a little bit confusing because we have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values, but we get eight notes. And also the first two values here are different, but it starts with the same notes. And this confused me a little bit when I started to work with intervals until you realize that of course an interval has nothing to do with the note, it's just the distance in between notes. So in the case of interval to pitch, it will start with the, um, by default, it will start with the note C. So we already get this, and then we say we want an interval of zero. So it will go from C to C. So this zero here actually represents this second C here. And then after that, we go from there up one. So that would be your, would be your uh, sorry, up two, that would be your D. And then up one, so that will be your E flat. So you always have to take a look at the note before to see what's happening with these um, with these intervals. Um, that's just in case you're used to working with intervals already, then this shouldn't be such of a problem. I guess I wasn't. Um, another very straightforward function, pitch invert. We can invert their interval. So let's say we do um, A2, C3, E3, minor chord, and we evaluate that. It will just invert the interval so rather than going up it will go down for a minor third and then a major third so also very straightforward now this is sort of one of those convenient functions because you could do this with other functions as well one that comes to mind is the pitch variant um, which is a little bit more flexible so with pitch variant what we can do let's also give this um, a bit of a melody uh, let's say F3, G3, A flat 3, G3, B3. Let's first start like this. So you can see that every time I evaluate, it's quite different. And that's because the default um, variant is nil, which means random. Nil, by the way, in Lisp means um, means nothing. It's, it means it's not specified, as opposed to T, which means that it's true. It's, it's, it's like yes uh, or false and true in most programming languages, nil and T within Lisp. So because I didn't specify any variant, um, it will it will randomly choose one. Um, what I could do here is specify one by saying variant and I can say for example retrograde. So now you can see they will always be the same. Um, I can do a retrograde inversion as well. So 
we will invert the nodes and retrograde them. Um, we can choose a random variant each time. Um, we can also say to transpose everything by 12 or down. Um, we can also say if we have random variants, which ones to om omit. So we can say omit, um, for example, let's see if this works. So now it should always omit that specific type of variant. Um, all right, so that's for uh, some of the most commonly used pitch functions. Once again, of course, there are many more. Um, but I wanted to take a look at vectors now. So let's create a vector, which we've done before for rhythms. And I think we also use gen noise. Let's just evaluate that. If we want to be fancy, we can take a look at it as well, pressing Shift Option Command 1. And we see the shape. We will see that that shape is uh, different every time we hit this key command. Um, and we'll use that and we're going to map that to our pitches. So to do that, similar to what we had before when we used length map, we also have um, the uh, vector, vector map. Oh, no, actually we used vector map before and we used length map. But in this case, let's do a pitch list rather than a length list. And we can say C4, E flat 4, I don't know why I'm so C orientated today. Um, maybe it's laziness. So now um, we pass that noise to this list and it's going to map these values to the node that comes closest to that. Now all of these melodies, actually a lot that we have done so far, um, in this case it's, it's harmonic because we choose the list, but we can later push this more towards certain tonalities that we'd like to use. And we're going to take a look at that when we get towards the tonality and chords section of this of this course. Um, but for now, we'll have to uh, live with the fact that our, our melodies can be fairly random at times. And this is that thing where we, where we have some faith in the progress. We're, we're trying to just generate a lot of things and later we're going to give it more of a a direct shape um, rather than starting with something that instantly sounds good we we allow ourselves to experiment more now another one here we can use is the um, vector to pitch this is the one i men mentioned before where we had vector to length um, so we have a pitch version of that as well vector to pitch and um, we can give this a range in this case let's say everything between g2 and g4 and then we put in a vector there. So we can either choose the vector that we had already. Or we can create a new one. I think one we haven't looked at is Gen Pink Noise. Uh, gen Pink Noise. Uh, let's give it, I don't know, 24 values. If we want to take this whole vector concept a little bit further, um, we have actually vectors that we can modulate with other vectors. So let's take a look at this function. It's called mod sine waves. Um, if we search for it, we can see what is the explanation. Modulating iterations of sine wave as generated by gen sine um, to the nth iter times. Arguments following nth iter are the same as in gen sine. Okay, okay. We are going a little bit advanced because we haven't taken a close look at gen sine yet, and we're also gonna we're already gonna take a look at its um, at its mod modulated uh, cousin. So the first argument here is the um, the number representing the iteration of the wave. This is before we have have the resolution itself. The resolution can be um, fairly high. This is basically how, how well defined it is, how smooth it is as well in the case of a sine wave. Um, then we have the frequency. Let's, let's set it to 4 for now and we have the amplitude. So let's see if we can evaluate this by itself and if we can plot this by itself. So we can see already that this is a sine wave that gets uh, modulated and you can come up with quite some experimental curves there. But it has another parameter which is actually the modulation as well. So we can, we can modulate this further and create even crazier shapes. Now to do this, what I'm um, going to do here 
this is one of the, uh, maybe is this the first time? Maybe that we have a keyword and we have another function as arguments to the keyword there. So here I want to pass in another sign um, with a, um, what's this called? The resolution of 64, um, a frequency of one, and then we can uh, specify some amplitudes, for example. This can again be a list. And now we need to be careful to close the function here and let's see if it still works, it still works. And then let's do our plotting, shift option command one. And you can see that now there's these, these new modulation lines added there. Um, so it's also in between, it's being modulated um, based on these amplitudes right here. So sometimes it's very subtle. Um, it can also be more extreme like this. And you can see that you get these very high, high peaks right there. So usually when we have code like this, um, we will break it apart a little bit, or meaning we will change the um, the way the code looks, that's all. So if we use a different function here, generally you would indent it something like this, and it just makes it a little bit easier to read. So we have that beautiful wave right there. We can see all the values that it produce, produces, and then we could map this um, to this vector to pitch one that we used before. So rather than using just this pink noise, we can add another layer here. And we can say vector, vector to pitch. Um, this takes a range. So maybe again, we can do something G3. Let's do it this time, G5. Um, and then we pass this mod sine waves in there. So if you with this, if you select the whole region and then you press tab, it should indent it correctly for you. So now you can see that we just need one more parenthesis there. And now we actually get pitches. So let's listen to that. Now, one thing you can see here is that um, so it starts to rise there, right? And then it stays, stays more or less at the same node for quite some time. And then later here in the piece, we can just click at a new position. It's much more wild. And we could see exactly that same thing um, in, the, in the shape as well. So if we take a look here, we can see that the, um, what's happening here with the nodes, that's basically this section here where it's, where it's relatively uh, relatively high um, and then it will drop lower although it cannot go that low because we have set our outer bounds if I make this more extreme you will see in the output as well you can see it go all the way up there and then quickly drop down Yeah, so it's a little bit difficult to track or follow this sometimes. Um, but hopefully you see that this shape is being represented there. This can be very interesting. And of course, we don't have to use this sine wave. If we can, if we go to our vectors here, um, we can use different ones to modulate. Um, let's see, let's, uh, actually this might be in the waves. Let's see if we have a saw, for example, gen saw tooth. Um, and instead of the sign here, or like, yeah, let's, let's choose it here. So instead of the sign, let's do gen saw tooth. And then uh, we have um, a resolution again, the frequency and the amplitude. So we should be able to just keep this. Let's first plot this by itself. So you can see that I go to this inner function. If I want to plot something, I go to where that function closes before I press my key command. So here we can see that, um, that saw wave um, multiples. And now we can plot the whole thing here as well. This is what that would look like, and then we can evaluate the whole thing. Not that different in this case. Now, of course, later you could always um, scale this down, and you can use all the other functions on this as well to put it back to a certain range again, or um, you can make this much smaller. Like right now, we have a lot of values. We can reduce this here, let's say eight. If we start to mess with this range here, you can um, keep everything within one octave. <laughs> I 
I, I actually really like that. I should save that maybe at some point. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, once again a little bit about these vectors. But now for pitches, then um, well, actually I wanted to go to Markov, but let's let's do one more thing um, since we're talking about this. It's the ambitus function. I think I mentioned it briefly. This is a function that's sometimes included into other functions. So rather than doing this here, we can also do this later. So let's say we give this one a very wide range and let's assign it set f mod melody. Um, and we need to close that function there and we can evaluate this. And now in Amethyst, we can give this a range, let's say G4. Um, um, then we add our mod melody there. now it will also greatly reduce that if I set this to G3 towards A3 you will only ever get two notes and um, if we go to the images documentation uh, we can see that we have quite a lot of them um, now one thing we can do here as well we can use an instrument name so um, if we instead of this G3 here we can say for example piano which will be the full range uh, of a piano, or you can say violin. Or cello. And this will make sure that your notes are um, always constrained to the actual range of that instrument. And that is, of course, very useful when you're working with orchestral music. Um, so then with that out of the way, the last one I want to talk about is a little bit more fancy, which is a Markov chain. We can use Gen Markov. Now, if you're not familiar with Markov chain, which chains, which I wouldn't blame you for, um, it's a it's an, a mathematical algorithm where the state of the current step is um, is dependent on the previous step. So I took this example straight out of the documentation here because I think it's uh, it's illustrative. Let's say we have this and we have just a list of A, B, C, A, D, C, and B. Um, if I evaluate that, you can see that it will be different every time, but only slightly. And what happens here is we have, um, let's see, we have two C's in here, for example. So this C, uh, can only be followed by an A or it can be followed by a B. So the Markov algorithm is trying to figure out uh, relationships between items in a list. So it sees that, okay, if there's an A, it's allowed to be followed by a B. It's also allowed to be followed by a D. And this is what you see in the output here. You have an A, it's followed by a B. Um, here you have a B, it's followed by a C, and that's what we see right here. So it sort of tries to figure out which things belong to each other, or which, which steps are logically concluded to be, or logically flowing into the next step. Um, a, a very common example of this, if you think about the weather, they say, all right, if, if it's rainy weather, then um, the chance is maybe 10% that after rainy weather, you will get um, sunny weather. And if it's sunny weather, it may, might be 30% chance that after that, it's going to be clouded. So it's if, if we are at the current state, we try to predict what the possibility is that we go to a next state. And obviously for, for melodies, this can be really interesting because with melodies, we do have a little bit of these rules, right? Like often when you, when you are on the fifth, you might go back to the one after that, or you might go back to the sixth, for example, because they're both tonic. So, um, yeah, well, too much talking. Let's take a look at that. Um, let's say we create a Gen Markov with some notes here. And let's use uh, our trusty by now um, C, C minor scale, F2, G2. This is the original melody. So 
So you can you can hear that these, there's this um, similarity in between the melodies, and um, this can be a very powerful composition technique. And since we're talking about compositions, um, so so far we've been looking quite a lot at the function documentation here. But if we go to the documents right here, we also have this gigantic how-to section, um, which shows a lot of score ideas based on specific techniques. So for example, counterpoint, we have six different scores here that all use counterpoints. So some of them are, are incredible. Now, if we search for Markov here, there's also this one is a great example to check out. Um, it's uh, it's just called game music, and it starts with a, a starting melody. Right, very funky. And then later it uses this gen loop. So again, remember this will, because when it's green, you should be have a, a mental trigger where you know okay this is this is actually evaluating it is not only repeating it so this keeps evaluating this uh, markov chain on that theme to come up with variations of that theme um, if we play this whole piece we can um, just to give you a little bit of a preview of what we're actually working towards if i press command option one we can listen to this whole piece <laughs> So you get the idea there. Um, really interesting to check out. And in general, um, it's good to check out some of these scores. You learn a little bit about how how they are combined. Everyone can work very differently in Opus Modus, and everyone does. Um, so how you lay out your score is, is, is a very personal thing, something that will have to have to grow um, with you. Uh, but this is one example, and, and a very clear one, in my opinion, and also very nice sounding. Um, all right, so next up we're going to talk about harmony. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting one, and um, this is where things start to come together a little bit. There's a couple more items on our list. We want to talk about harmony and about uh, dynamics and articulations, and then we're going to start uh, building our piece, uh, piece by piece, I might say. <laughs> 